Episode of Love and Heartbreak, Real Estate Unfiltered. People are probably wondering, why the heck do I have a gym owner on a <laughs> real estate uh, show and podcast? Because uh, it is Love and Heartbreak, I think, is the main title. Yep. Uh, Prince Braithwaite is someone that is a dear friend of mine. He's been my trainer for a long time. Um, there's no real estate agent in the city with biceps quite like him. <laughs> and he's been the owner of Trooper Fitness for over seven years, tons of five-star reviews. Um, both of our wives have traded breast pumps together because they were having That's babies at the same time. That's so <laughs> we've traded a lot of, uh, you know, just fatherly, you know, figure type stuff, which I know, you know, you're very dedicated father, entrepreneur, you're a trainer on the Daily Burn, which is a huge accomplishment. Um, the studio is a high rock studio and has done very well in those competitions. So uh, a lot of great things. And I had the awesome pleasure to get to Go a little deeper with you, you know, just I guess somewhat recently about, you know, the business and getting started and all that type of stuff. And the the real reason why I think we're having you on here today is because, you know, in the real estate business, every kind of real estate agent is their own entrepreneur, right? Mm -hmm. And it's it's small businesses kind of comparable to, you know, the sizes of what you've you know gotten started up. So and you've gone through a lot of trials and tribulations to get there. So Tell, like, how did you get to where you're going with, uh, or with where you are with Trooper Fitness? So tell me a little bit about just like, you know, the upbringing yeah. and... Uh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, first of all, thank you for that intro. You just boosted my self-esteem. <laughs> just by <laughs> the way you laid it out. Well done. Thank you for that. Um, no, I pretty much, I mean, it, it all started, I guess the way I got into entrepreneurship. I can't say that I initially wanted to be in fitness um, or own a gym when I initially, you know, embarked on my life journey and... Uh, so I originally was going to school for nursing. Um, just, you know, my, my intention was, I guess I had an entrepreneur mind and didn't realize it, but I went to school for nursing, which obviously lended towards the anatomy and getting into fitness anyway. But uh, I did it because at the time, it was like a shortcut. I could do two years, of, two years of school, come out with an associate's, and you could come out making like 60, 70K, and I actually planned to get into real estate with that money. I'd stay home and invest in real estate was the original plan. There you to, go. It all to, ties back to real estate. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the original plan. Um, we're not knowing much at all. Um, but I ended up going, you know, being a personal trainer while in college, um, just because I like, you know, fitness for myself, having an athletic background, um, you know, playing basketball. Um, so I just always had an interest in fitness for the most part as a kid. And then I ended up being a personal trainer and I fell in love with it. Not so much the fitness aspect of it, believe it or not, but the people aspect of it. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, the part that sparked me into where I am now and probably still defines who I am is that I do have a love for people. Um, I didn't know that when I was young. I think I'm, I'm a social butterfly, it turns out. Um, but when I became a trainer, and I must have been like maybe 20, 21, um, I got to realize that I was affecting people's lives, people whom in other, other situations I would look up to, people who are older than me, people who are professionals in, in their realm and could lend me a lot of advice people that I would otherwise just completely look up to and did look up to. But in the fitness realm, knowing a little bit more than them and, and taking care of their health, making the, empowering them uh, really empowered me because I, I felt value. And at that age, you're trying to find who you are. And someone saying, you changed my life at like 2021, 20, that's not even what I intended. That wasn't even, when you think of work, you don't think about most of what, maybe now people do, but I didn't think about going into something to change people's lives. Like I got a job to get paid so I can make a living. And once I heard that, I was like, I remember that epiphany moment where I was like, oh, I'm doing this. This is what I'm doing. Because I can't think of anything else that would give me this feeling. So that's how I got into fitness. Um, I personal trained, worked at a, a big box gym called New York Sports Club for quite some time. Um, ended up doing some outdoor classes, which would end up being Trooper, uh, to fast forward it. And it didn't work out the first time. I tried to do outdoor classes in Brooklyn. The only person that showed up was my mother. And this one... <laughs> <laughs> and this one person I call a sister oh, to this day mom. because she's held me down forever. She actually was the officiant at my wedding, uh, Danny. Uh, she actually works near here, actually. Okay. But uh, she, um, she, her and my mother, and it would, my mother would pay me 20 bucks. Like, this is when she would, and she would come consistently. I did this for a, a good few months, just holding on, thinking it would pick up. It never did. <laughs> so I abandoned that, went back to just working, grew, uh, built myself up, became a manager, 
at New York Sports Club, which probably was pro- probably in the long run advantageous to me to learn more of the business in terms of uh, you know numbers and things like that. Um, and eventually, you know, teaching group exercise alongside of management, I eventually tried it again. It was Spartan Race, which is an obstacle course race that actually right. launched me into running business oh, officially okay. because I ended up doing outdoor workouts for um, for my, my the members of my gym and. People, you know, we to prepare for the the obstacle course race that I have never even done yet, but we were training for it outdoors. Uh, when the race was over, people were still interested in it. Um, I had no business name; no, it wasn't for business at that time. Uh, but eventually, it would grow into what we know now know as Trooper Fitness. But it was only outdoor boot camp classes. Uh, and then it, you know, obviously through trials and tribulations and getting feedback from people and really just staying true to it, not trying to be a gimmick fitness, trying to do true fitness, if you will. Um, that's how my version of true fitness is how we landed on what trooper fitness is, which is a mix of strength training with programming as well as conditioning classes geared towards the individual. That's so interesting. And to me, one of the most fascinating parts of that, that I actually didn't know is that it failed on its first go around. Yeah. Were there things from your upbringing or childhood? Cause obviously you have to have a lot of toughness and tenacity to, you know, fail and then try again. And, you know, I, I know you've mentioned or alluded to, there was like, you know, some tough things that you went through early on. And I, I found myself saying to someone yesterday, if it's tough now, it's easy later. If it's easy now, it's tough later, which I yeah. think goes hand in hand with yeah, fitness. So yeah. what, what were some of maybe those tough things that kind of formed you or built you from an early age? Yeah, no, I mean, even down to what, you know, it's funny, you look back in retrospect and it kind of becomes clear, you know, the name Trooper, what it, what it stands for is resilience, right? And I do think my upbringing um, definitely lent to that. Um, I do think there's a decision. Um, I think we all face challenges that we were faced with to make a decision whether we, uh, we keep going and choose to be resilient or we can let it make or break us, basically. Um, I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, um, not, you know, not, not exactly on the affluent side of town. And uh, it was rough. I was around a lot of gang activity growing up. I think the balance is that I had a great family that always instilled good values in me, let me kind of, you know, let me know what to expect when I go outside and when I'm in the park, when I'm, when I'm after school, when I'm hanging out, you know, just let me know that there's going to be things that you need to be aware of. And, and, and if you want to do well in your life, you need to know the difference between what you see and what you want, um, which I think was, that was completely important. But yeah, I mean, I, a lot of, just in, in short, um, I don't want to make it sound all gloom because, like I said, my family was great. It was, I felt loved. I think that's the main thing is yeah. feeling loved is I mean, where our, is our self-esteem. Yeah, especially yeah. as a parent, as a father now. I think that base beyond everything is what what gives you the ability to be resilient, believe yeah. it or not. But, yeah, man, uh, you know, gang activity, um, getting in fights every day. Not every, well, pretty almost every day, like, you know, knives and stuff like that. And, and, I, and I'm such a, you know, I, I always feel the need. I don't know if it's like I have this need to say that I'm totally... I would, you know, it's, I, I avoid any type of uh, confrontation at this point because it's just not, it's not, um, it's not advantageous to anybody for the most part. But I did not, I grew up in, a, in an environment which I also understand that it was valuable to stand up and fight because if you didn't, you'd have more problems. So a lot of that, um, watch my best friend get shot in front of me. Um, my best friend, one, well, my friend at the time got shot in front of me. Then another one of my best friends is dead. He got shot uh, by the police. Um, yeah, and all, you know, not. And I'm a, I'm a very uh, loving purpose, purpose person, and I feel the need to preface. Yeah. You know, I have I have nothing against. I'm not, not only do I not have anything against police, I actually I see the value in police, and I'm glad we have police. But it was a very unfortunate situation where, um, you know, my my friend ended up losing his life to to the police. Um, he. I wouldn't say he was necessarily a criminal, but he was ob- he had a knife in his hand at the time and was, you know, like all of us, we know now about mental health and just, he was in a stressed out situation. They told him to put the knife down and open fire on it, fire him. You know, it's questionable about whether that was the right, well, it, it probably, it, it was not the right thing to do, but I also understand the complexities of decision making in hot situations. Um, but yeah, I grew up around that. Um, just, you know, so just being able to, to navigate through that environment I, I attribute that my resilience a lot to that because whenever I face business problems or losing money, I feel like at least I have the, if I can, if I'm alive and I can get up tomorrow, this is not really a problem yeah. because I know a lot of my friends are not alive. So whatever problem I have is not as bad as not being alive. So I get down like anybody else. Uh, my wife has seen me completely break down and cry because I felt like something wasn't working for me. 
And that's fine. I think as humans, we're all going to, I think it's important to also feel your emotions, to, to feel down when you're down. But that decision to get back up is imperative. Um, and, you know, the motto at Trooper Fitness is all we know is go. And damn it, if that's not all I know, all I know is go. So here we are. Well, that, that is, uh, I, I mean, I, I didn't know many of uh, those points for as well as uh, I know you. So thank you for, you know, thank you for sharing. And no problem. yeah, I think what I take away from that is to have the, the loving kindness and the loving purpose, I think is what you said, even through, you know, all of that. And that's like the side that you get to, like, mm-hmm. that's real resiliency and, and being able to, you know, accept, but actually spread, uh, you know, good through what you do, you know, both business and personally. And, you know, you mentioned, you, you said the word a few times, challenge. Mm-hmm. And so I want to, you know, harp on that and challenges with Trooper, but, you know, hey, all we know is go. So continue to overcome these things. What are some of just like, you know, some of the crazy stories? We were kind of talking about one, you know, beforehand here, um, you know, that you've had to overcome as a business owner just to like basically, you know, pinch pennies to make nickels, uh, you know, yeah. type of thing to get everything started. So, I mean, anybody who's run business and lasted more than a year or two probably knows that there's usually, I, I can stand by this, there's more than I can name or even think of in the moment. Um, literally that's what, you know, businesses getting up and getting ready to put out fires, um, you know, but being, uh, being excited about it (laughs) because, you know, you're working on what you want to work on. It should be that way anyway. Um, so yeah, there's a few, uh, quick stories I can give you where we, you know, we had, before we even opened the studio, I remember speaking of Spartan race, we used to do a lot of obstacle course races and it was a race. I won't say which race because the the person that was running it kind of did us dirty and we were preparing for it and it was supposed you had to bring the race doesn't exist anymore by the way but there were you had to we there was like a prepper kind of like the high rocks now like you mm-hmm. you know how we prep for the high rocks now like there's certain things you're going to do in the race or in the obstacle course that you need to prepare for so and it involved equipment in this case it involved like barbells and heavy things and weights that we needed and we were doing outdoor classes and we had agreed that we would hold a class for this obstacle course race, kind of partner with them and be open to the public for it. So we, you know, I take, I, I'm, one of my core values personally and for Trooper is integrity. And I told my members that we were going to do this, um, this thing. And he was, the person was supposed to provide the, the equipment. We don't have the equipment. I, I didn't have a studio yet. I worked at New York Sports Store at the time. And, and, I guess it's the statute of limitations. Long story short, we ended up taking the, they, he didn't show up. He didn't show up the day, the night before. He said, oh, I have a double booked an event. I can't be there. I'm like, I can't, can't. I told my people, my people are excited. I told them I'd be there. So I have to do this. One way or another, let's figure it out. Uh, and we borrowed, borrowed steel, steel, stole borrowed. But we put it back. Big borrowed yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Took stuff out the put back. Put it back. Yeah, put it back. Took stuff from New York Sports Club, borrowed from a few gyms that I knew that, you know, but it wasn't enough. So we borrowed from a few studios that lent us, like barbells and stuff. And we, um, yeah, we, we, we held the, the event. And when I tell you, we had to, it, by the East River track, there actually, there's no way to really drive right up to the park. You yeah. have to go over. So we were carrying, it took like two hours to set up. Oof. Um, leaving was faster because everybody helped us. But, <laughs> that, but when we got there and it was like three of us coaching, me, Jen, my wife, my now wife, um, and flex, we were lifting, you know, flex, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were lifting the stuff over and putting, um, the stuff we got to set up and we helped, we had a hell of an event. People loved it, but I mean, and people didn't see that, but it was like such, I had, we were driving with barbells past our head in the car dangerously, you know, so it was, it was insane, but we got it done. It tends to be the theme. Um, I think I told you the story I kind of mentioned to you quickly was in opening this studio that we have right now, we, um, the turf, which is the almost the, the grass carpet, if you will, um, that we used to like run the sleds on and stuff in our in our conditioning room, we had to we I, I didn't want any seams in it, so I ordered a hole. It was 15 feet wide and 75 feet long, and I didn't want it to be cut in half. They asked me if I wanted to cut it in half. I said no, so I had to wait longer because of that. And they sent it because it was a there was one that was already in two pieces. I wanted the long one, and they sent it. Um, and when it got here, it was a thousand pounds at, uh, together. And they and they they drop it at the front, and you have to bring your stuff in. That's just the way freight works these days. So we're like, all right, we threw it on dollies, and I was like, there's, and then I realized 15 feet, you know, um, wide, which is rolled up, so it's long. Now it's 15 feet tall. Tall, right? Can't go up the stairs. You can't go up the elevator with it. It's a thousand pounds, and 
you know, we're, we're on the second floor is where our studio is located. Luckily, it would have been trouble if you're still on. Yeah, it's too shit. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, you're, oh my goodness. So we we uh, ended up, uh, I ended up, they were like, we have to cut it. I was, you know, stuck to my guns once again. I think it's part of, in retrospect, one of the, the resilient, my personality type that may be annoying at times to people, but it gets things done. We had, I decided to open the turf up. And I didn't even know if this would work. I opened the turf up on the street. We took cones, blocked the street off. Once again, I'm not sure that's legal, but we, yeah, <laughs> but we did it. And we rolled the turf the long ways like this. My idea was to snake it up the stairs. It was a good plan, except for the fact that we could, you can't grip it because it's a turf, it's thick. Um, so we ended up having to innovate in, you know, in, the, in the time like, oh, we got it folded, but now we can't lift it. So we ended up getting like a bunch of uh, TRX straps, which is like straps, some ropes, I had 20 members, troopers, and I have to say, my my magic stories are all like community support. Like, how did you do that? I didn't. My team did it. My my members did it. We community is the reason we got we get through most of the things, and we lifted it up. First of all, the weight of it, it only moved when we all moved in unison. So it ended up being a team building exercise that I think nobody that was there will ever forget, because it took us two and a half hours to get it up. It did work, but it took two and a half hours to get up one flight of stairs. It was like back row, go, front row, go. And we ended up like yelling and moving in unison. And when we got it, we were celebrating putting a carpet. <laughs> like, <laughs> we got our, it was like the, the happiest moment getting our carpet up the stairs. Um, and that, that's it's just those kind of things. Like, it's like, it's just the carpet. We have to get dumbbells. We think about the gym, people just run over that thing now, not knowing that yeah. how much we put into that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Every time I do a sled pre- uh, sled push now, I'll uh, exactly have a use, greater, use greater that level pre- of appreciation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> use that as like an extra boost of uh, you know motivation. So you mentioned a couple things, yeah, you know, throughout community, um, and you you have such a tight community. Yet you started with you know your mom paying you twenty bucks a class with no you know with no base. So how you know like and you mentioned I don't know if it's you know integrity but you know how do you or how have you built that client base and built that trust and things like that you know over time yeah I think I think uh, as, as corny as it may sound I, I think over time just being true being honest being real with people um, I think a lot of people when they do business there's like this you, you know if you, if you come into business thinking about it as business a lot of times you think about numbers first and I think to me, the way I look at it, numbers don't move people, but people move numbers. So you'd be, you'd be, you'd be better, uh, it would behoove you to rather put your energy into people, and I think numbers will follow. Not to say you shouldn't track data and track numbers, but I think if you work with people in any business, whether it's networking or your actual customer base, I think being honest with people goes a long way, especially over time when you build a, a you know, reputation. Um, you know, and listen, I, the further you go, then much, the further I move up, you know, now that I'm like trying to scale, I find myself, um, you know, at, just kind of um, in conflict sometimes with people, which um, is not my, my uh, the funnest part of, of business. But, you know, no matter what, I think, you know, again, integrity, staying true to who you are and, and, um, and just operating from love. I know, it's, again, it sounds corny, but I really am, I operate from love. If anything, if I ever feel like what I'm doing is not aligned with love, I'm, I'm going to stop and I'm going to get back realigned with love. Uh, and that, that's a big part of who I am too. Uh, yeah. I, I, I believe I, I love everyone, everyone, including people who hate me, including hate, you know, we'll call it hateful people. I think, and I think the world, not, I know this, this is not what the conversation is about, but I think the world, uh, if we could get on that page, I think we'd be a lot better in, in life. So I do my part and try to, you know, do that through business, through life. And, um, it served me in business. Yeah. Too. It's, uh, you know, it's inspiring and it's something that, you know, I hope to, you know, aspire more to. I don't know if I'm... Uh, I feel like you're like, you're definitely as, like that. Uh, no, you're like that. You. So, um, I, uh, I, I like that quite a bit. The, you know, I, I love what you said. Numbers don't move people. People move numbers. So, I'll have to highlight that and uh, say that. I think that's going to go up on my board cool. uh, for, uh, for later today. I really like that a lot. Um, you know, I, managing a gym, too, can be tough, though. I mean, I think pre-COVID, there was an explosion of you know, independent gyms, right. similar to yourself with, you know, instructors and, you know, and, and I've seen it over the years is, you know, instructor stays somewhere for a bit and then maybe they decide to go do their own thing or want to be an influencer on Instagram or whatever the, you know, the, the case, uh, you know, might be. So to like, but you always kind of restock, you know, with great people. So how, like running a team, managing a team, 
you know, I know you do it with love, but you know, what are some of those challenges like, and how do you kind of, you know, yeah, I'm still through those. I'm still learning, um, and I, I, I realize now I'm re- I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that COVID was our probably our biggest challenge. Um, mm. So we did get through that, and through with community, so I can tie that right back in. And I remember specifically, and I'll get to m- the people as well. And I don't. Uh, so the reason, so when when COVID happened, it was uh, I was advised, and most people were advised to kind of cut staff cut employees to cut, yeah. you know, cut expenses because, you know, revenue is not going to be coming in the same way. Mm-hmm. We, we pivoted, thankfully, right away. I think, you know, we get a lot of, um, uh, you know, accolades and a lot of um, kudos for pivoting to virtual right away and, and virtual classes, I mean. Uh, we never had done that before. So, you know, it was a silver lining that we still do it and, and it's, work, it's worked well and is working well. But, um, you know, one of the things that I, I don't know, I have this thing where I'm like, I guess because it is because of the way I grew up. I grew up where loyalty was such a valuable thing. It kept you alive. Like you, it was a valuable thing when you're mm. in physical danger. Mm-hmm. And I think when COVID happened, I got, uh, I'll call it metaphorically, in that fight or flight mode. I was like, yeah. they're coming for us and I can't let go of my people. I need to protect my people. And I, and I kept everyone. I said, I told my team, I said, I know everyone's afraid and people are getting let go. I'm not letting go of anybody. We're going to weather this storm together and we're going to make it. I'm gonna let you know how when I figure it out. <laughs> but we're gonna make it, and we're gonna make it together. And um, that's <laughs> I didn't say that part to them, but that was what was going on. <laughs> I had the same thoughts running through my head. Yeah. Uh, so people are like asking you all these questions. You're like, I don't know. I'm just as scared as you are. What are yeah. you talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you have that responsibility sometimes right. as a leader to like yep. to 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 be confident to to be confident that you'll figure it out and. You know, I kept my people with me, but you know, and I think people, they appreciated, my whole team appreciated me for that, for it at the time. Um, since then, I, I remember specifically that, and this isn't, you know, there's some people who just reg, like just a regular day to day after COVID when we came back to the gym, not immediately after, but there were times where people said they didn't feel appreciated by me. And, you know, I've been reading up, um, I always read and try to keep, you know, keep the tools sharp. And one of the things I learned is that um, you need to keep communicating with whoever your your team is. You need to keep reminding them. Well, not only remind them. One, keep checking in with them on what is making them tick, because one, you need to know that in order to keep them inspired and motivated. And you need to keep checking in because it changes for people. I learned that whatever when, the reason you started at this company might not be the reason that you're staying. You might want. You might have decided. You might have, you lived life and you want more and you or you want something different and that's totally fine. But it's very hard as a leader for me to guide you if I don't know that. And unfortunately, well, fortunately or unfortunately, you know, I think it, it falls on the leader to keep checking in with your team. Um, grant, granted, people should, um, you know, if they, if they have an open door policy, which I come to find, I don't, you know, I still lean on, it's an open door policy in yeah. my company. I've, it's not work for me. Open door policy. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like letting people know. But then you still got to go to them. You got to go out the doors. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. <laughs> open doors people, for the leader to go out. People with her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You got to walk over to people. That's what open door really means. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, I think a lot learning about that, and and I also uh, there's like books that I read. We, you know, we talk. I talked to you about traction. You've actually mentored me a little bit in terms of how to use you know certain tools and stuff. Uh, and in, in in the book traction that I know you're familiar with, uh, it talks about every ninety days how there's like. And I've seen, I've heard since then. There's multiple studies that show every 90 days t- people tend to uh, take their eye off the, the the north star, and you have to keep reminding them where the north star is. Um, so you have, that's what mission statements are for. That's what core values are for in a company which I've just recently implemented since our um, our discussion, which was a while ago. Um, and it's definitely helped. But again, like I said, you have to. It's it's still a uh, uh, um, a challenge. Uh, you know, I always, I'm very honest, I'm not perfect. I tell my team I'm not perfect. I try to be every day. I try to be everything they need me to be. Um, I fall short sometimes in, in, in terms of, at least in their eyes. And, and I'm, not, I'm still trying to learn if, because, I, because I'm a good person first, uh, I believe that sometimes with leadership, I'm not sure if maybe I'm not. I lead, maybe I lead with being nice or lead with being, uh, I should say kind, not nice, but kind. Um, and not really drawing the lines, exact, showing where the lines are immediately. So I think structure it's probably one of the things like people need structure when they're when they're when they're under your leadership. I think it just it also creates clarity. Uh, that's something I've been working on and learned. And uh, yeah, management's tough. I actually just recently hired a, a general manager to take over uh, the studio right now, so I can open, I can continue to scale. So I'm I'm super excited about that because 
Right. Um, but at the same time, I know I still need to be good at leadership because I have to lead him. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you can't, you know, there's, there is no getting free. It's just like, uh, you know, kind of more focusing. Different, uh, different levels. I mean, one of the things I think you mentioned was integrity early on and, you know, and that honesty. And, and one of the things in my leadership journey and being thrusted into leadership positions in my, you know, 20s was, you know, when someone comes to you and they're like, you know, if there's a question you don't know, just say you don't know. Yeah, I um, read that. Or if they're, you know, so being able to be comfortable and vulnerable with like whatever your flaws are and things like that, I, I've always found people I think appreciate that much more than trying to put on some front. Like, yeah, you know, I'd venture to say that's that's true perfection. strength too. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so I, I usually like to wrap it with, you know, if you know, if you're talking to or as you've talked to different, you know, business owners, entrepreneurs, right, which many, you know, folks in real estate are, mm -hmm. um, what's kind of like your most frequent, you know, advice or most frequently kind of given advice to anybody who's, you know, either starting off or, you know, building a business or anything like that? Um, I, you know, one of the most frequent things I tell people is to keep educating yourself that, you know, the landscape of business, the landscape of the world, the landscape of the economy is going to always be changing. Um, so the market is constantly changing, so you need to keep constantly be changing and pivoting and growing and um, not necessarily following trends, but understanding what's going on so you can you can live in it and grow within whatever realm you're in. And I would say, you know, a lot of the ways you can grow and learn is to read books and to educate yourself. However, the books will not make you succeed. That I firmly believe that the books will not make you succeed. I think there are tools that you need to implement within and make it yours because you know any bestseller has probably had what 300 million readers 300 million, pe million people did not do that so you have to implement it first of all and then of the people that implemented it let's say you know 10 percent you know actually did it 300,000 people actually did it and then of that maybe 10 percent people act did it right and you're like you know 30,000 still not 30,000 people winning off of that you know necessarily so I just feel like and, and if, if you all do the same exact thing, if you just take that and use it as a blueprint and do it, same exact thing, how could you be innovative? How could you stand out? How could you be remarkable? So I think, you know, having the structure of a lot of these books is great to create framework, but there has to be uh, creativity. There has to be you. You have to put yourself into it. I think even in real estate, I venture to say, and it's not my realm, but any business, is that you need to put your spin on it. Whether you're a salesperson, whether you're, um, the way you look for houses, it's like read the book, but use your brain. Think about what makes sense to you. A lot of times people who, you know, always retrospect. Humans are good at this, retrospect. We go, man, Warren Buffett did the opposite of everybody else and he did great. And then, and then we go right back to, well, everyone's saying this, so I'm gonna do that. But, you know, you don't, you, greatness does not lie in the path, on the road that everyone's taken. So I would say, yeah, educate yourself in short and be willing to, uh, and keep thinking for yourself as well. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, if you're going to challenge other people's thoughts, you need to challenge your own. And, That's really yeah, and I think the um, all tons of the information is out there. What I find in our industry, I tell people all the time, real estate's been around since dirt. Right. You know, right. <laughs> we're not recreating the wheel here. Right. But you know, and all the information's there. Right. Uh, execution and how people like actually go. They're persistent. They do it with integrity. They do it with honesty. You know, there's tons of successful, um, you know, competition type things that are out now. But this right. guy who screwed you guys, like you never work, you know, right. with him again. Correct. Right. And I'm sure he had that, which is why you know he's he's not around anymore. There's all these like little things that go on. I think with the execution and treating people right, right, and. Uh, you know, I, I didn't know much about parenting, but when I got into being a parent, but I think the only thing I said is like, I'm just going to lead with love. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think you're one of those people. That, yeah. You know, I hear with that from, you know, really leading with, uh, yeah. leading with love too. So tons of great, you know, just I think stories of resiliency, perseverance, honesty, trust, and, uh, you know, you run a great great studio that I think is only going to go up and be uh, be scaling up very big, uh, just knowing the person that you are. So I appreciate that. I, I, I want to say not in yeah. a cocky way, I agree. I know. Not because of me, because of people like you and, and, the, and the team that we have and the energy that's there that seems to be beyond me, um, which I think starts with, once again, that spark that, um, of, I call it love. Yeah, and yeah. It starts with the spark of... Uh, People carrying a thousand pound mat up. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, places. exactly. There you go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's, I don't a, that's a, a spark or an exhaustion. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, both. both. Yeah, both. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
So, yeah. all right. Well, yeah. cool, man. Well, thank you so much for uh, for taking the time. No, I really the pleasure was mine. It. Seriously, this the pleasure was awesome mine. and great content. I think for uh, for people to hear. No, and, uh, it's been an honor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and if you're not working out at uh, at Trooper Fitness or virtually or anything, you're doing yourself a disservice. I'm a big believer that peak performance and sales comes from being in a peak state, and peak state comes from physiology first. This man's got the physiology right. Thank so. you very much. Appreciate right, that. Man. Appreciate you. All right. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Love and Heartbreak, Real Estate Unfiltered. If you got anything that made you laugh, learn, we'd love to hear your comments. Got suggestions? Send us an email at podcast at elegrin.com. Big thanks to our support team, and we'll be back next week with more unscripted stories. And until then, like, subscribe, please share this with friends. And in the meantime, have fun, help people, and enjoy.